Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined, as always, by Rob Henderson. Hello. And I'm Brian Black. And today we are going to talk watches. So yeah. if you don't want to hear some geeky, nasty, filthy watch talk, you might want to turn off the podcast. Yeah. If you have the same watch and you don't ever want to buy another one, <laughs> click it off. So I was like that for a long time. So I'll first say that because I, I try not to be a watch snob. I've got a few now, but... Mm -hmm. There was a time, and this is only, God, it's probably only three years ago, where all I had was my Casio G-Shock. I mm -hmm. swore by it. That's all I wore. But the problem with a G-Shock is that I started to do more of my professional career, and mm -hmm. I wanted to have a nicer watch, and I went down a rabbit hole. And yeah, it's a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. Aided by some friends as well, and yeah, it turned into a can of worms. Yeah. But that's where I started with watch evolution. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've worn a watch on my wrist since I was 12 years old. Yeah. So I had this old, you know, I, I started off with some kind of bootleg watch and then moved into a time. I got it like Emmy Moses down the street when I was 12 years old and <laughs> some kids stole it out of my gym locker. And I remember someone came to my rescue and like got it back for me. And hey, that's it's kind of cool. But anyway, I eventually progressed to a Timex Ironman. I wore one of those for a long, long time. Um, and then I found G-Shock. Mm -hmm. So I used a DW6900 watch for, God, the, well, I still have one. Yeah. Um, and this is the, the black version that I have now. So they came out with some you know, high-speed high, high yeah. blacked-out watch. Tactical yeah. watch. Yeah, but the 6900 is a great watch. Yeah. Um, the 65 is the one I was, 6500 is the one that they issued at Bud's in second phase, and we would wear those during dives. And really the only difference is that, the 6900 has a little bit more blacked out on the, the bezel and mm -hmm. the actual buckle itself is plastic versus metal. So yeah. there's some little tiny differences like that. But yeah. um, for the most part, G-Shock's just, you know, I don't want to use Timex's line of taking a lick and keep on ticking. Yeah. But, you know, G-Shock's are, are super dependable. Sure. And, and the reason the Navy uses them is because they are shock resistant. So that's a big deal, too. Well, and they're cheap, too. Yeah. Which is good. But that's the thing is, like, because it's cheap doesn't make it bad. Right. I still think G-Shocks are one of the best watches out there mm -hmm. because of how much they can take. Yeah. Because they had that one that they uh, attached to like a like a line and they just ran it down with a camera on it to as far as they could go depth wise. And I mean, it went a crazy depth yeah. before it had any issues. It's a it's an amazing dive watch, and I still yeah. anytime I'm diving or anytime I'm in the water or even working out for that matter, I mm -hmm. have a G-Shock on. That's yeah. I don't wear other watches when I'm doing stuff yep. for the most part because, yes, there's sapphire crystals and they're not supposed to scratch and all that. But I just I want a watch that I can just knock into a side of a building yeah. and it's going to be fine. You well, know? and uh, worst case scenario, something does happen to it and it costs you sixty dollars right. to replace it. Exactly. I mean, the sapphire crystal's great, but it just prevents you from having to buy another watch. Well, if it's sixty bucks, just buy another <laughs> G-Shock. But yeah, yeah. Well, the the way I got started with watches is um i'd wanted a resco for a long time and that's kind of where i first mm -hmm. saw i finally saw a watch that i really liked you yeah know? that's all and, it takes is yeah, the one where yeah. you're like oh, and that's, okay, that's nice. and that was kind of the deal is i saw rescos i was like those are really cool i said i'm not gonna be able to afford one of those i really don't want to get one mm -hmm. um so i started looking around for other watches and then i was i'm a frequent browser on county com i still am from time to time mm -hmm. But they came out with one of their watches. It was like, a, I think one of their lines is Meritac. Mm -hmm. But they had a GPT-1, which was That's brand a new. Watch. I don't know. I think I've had mine for five or six years or something like that. But um, they had some Marathon pilot watches and stuff. And I remember Mike having one of those. And he was saying uh -huh. how, how good it was. But then that GPT-1 came out. And that was more my speed. It had a, you know, a chunkier bezel. It had yep. the NATO strap and stuff like that. And I was just blown away i was like that's super cool yeah plus it was aut uh, automatic and you know mm -hmm. i wanted to kind of get into automatic watches and stuff like that too so um that was where i started and that was probably like a 
like I got it when it was brand new, so they had a special. I think it was like under three hundred bucks when I bought it, mm -hmm. and I was just on cloud nine. I was like, "This is the coolest watch ever! It's awesome!" <laughs> and then Muster rolled around that year, and all the returnees to Muster yep. chipped in to get me a gift, which was amazing. Like I <laughs> didn't had no clue, uh, but they all you know put their money together and got me a Resco Black Frog, which was super awesome. Um, and then that's when it just kind of starts to multiply. went off, the, went off yeah. the rails, dude. Like, and I don't mean one off the rails. Like I got a hundred watches, but no. I've got, I don't know, more than one, five, five now, yeah. five good watches, I yeah. guess, you know, and yes, there's some quartz watches in there. So I can't really say they're all, you know, high priced automatics or something. And I still don't yeah. own anything. I still don't own anything super high priced. So, and I don't plan to. And I think the, I think the first thing we should talk about is quartz first automatic. Yes. Because we should definitely start. I there. think there's a big misnomer that automatics are better versus digital. So digital yeah. is like G-Shock. Yeah. But like quartz, got, uh, a digital uh, G-Shock has a quartz movement. So like, true. so yeah. the thing about quartz watches is they're, they're more dependable. Mm -hmm. They're more accurate. They require less maintenance. Um, I mean, they're they're lighter, they're smaller, they're pretty much better in every regard. People just like automatic movements because of kind of the history behind it. Right. So like, I always, it always cracks me up to see people talk about like when you really need a watch for a timing event or anything like that, and then they crap on quartz watches. But it's like <laughs> quartz watches are way more accurate. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a I have several automatic watches that lose up to like six seconds a day, mm -hmm. which you know, ten days you're off a full minute. That's that's an issue. Yeah. So. I think that Ain't nobody got time for that. Right. And I think <laughs> that people kind of give quartz a bad name. Um, I mean, once you starting getting into, like you said, kind of the, the watch snobbiness as mm -hmm. you go in the forums and all that kind of stuff, you'll see that most people don't even give quartz a regard, but my favorite quartz watch is like the Pulsar. It was the first digital watch and it came out in like 1971 hmm. and it cost the equivalent of like $10,000. Good Lord. And it was for a quartz watch. It was digital. It was the first like oh, quartz wow. digital watch and it had like a LED readout. It was the cheapest looking thing by today's standards, but it cost like 10 grand. Mm -hmm. So like now we're into automatics cause that's what everybody's into is the culture. But like at one point people were paying 10 grand for a quartz watch. Wow. So don't crap on them too much. Yeah. But I like the automatics just because it's kind of a, I don't know. It's an old school thing. It's mm -hmm. worst case scenario. If you never had another battery to put in it, the watch would keep working. Yep. So that's why I like them. Well, that, that GPT-1 I have from Countycom, it stopped working. This was probably four months ago or so now. Mm -hmm. And I'd had it for about six years. And I kept it on a, a watch winder, which I hate that thing. I shouldn't <laughs> even use one. They're I've never found a good one, so maybe yeah. somebody out there can make some recommendations, but I don't, I just, I kind of just deal with I just winding deal with my watch, yeah. yeah, so when I want to wear one. The, what happened with the GPT-1 is that I took it into a, you know, a local jeweler watch shop, you know, I said, hey, can you take a look at this, it's not working, um, and they said it was the movement, so they said there was something <laughs> wrong with the movement, I was like, okay. Which is like um, the whole thing. Yeah, well... I, it was going to cost me God, $250 for them to just open it up and, or no, no, sorry, to to take the movement out to find out what kind of movement it was, even though I told them what kind of movement yeah. it was, uh, to take it out and to, um, that didn't count the parts, you know, the, wow. the, the labor to get just all that fixed. Bucks just was, to look yeah. at it. So I was like, you know what? The watches are $300 right. now, and they're still, maybe they're like 350 now or something like that. So, you know, on a whim, I just emailed County Commons. I was sure. like, hey, um, I know it's been a long time. It's been, you know, about five years since I've had this watch, but I wanted to see if you guys offer any kind of repair service for these. Mm -hmm. um, they said, yeah, absolutely, you know, send it insured to this address, and I sent it in. And they sent me back within, like, a week and a half a brand new watch. So that was just freaking can't amazing. Beat that. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Great customer service. So I can't say enough good things about that. Well, and that's a great point for, you know, what a lot of people would consider oh, a Oh, they they did charge me like 40 bucks, but still. I mean, yeah. to get a new watch yeah. like 40 bucks is yeah. I mean, there's a lot of watch companies out there that will service the watch, but they'll charge you a full service fee. Mm -hmm. So I mean, for for the price you paid and what would be considered like a lower end automatic doesn't seem to be too low end when the manufacturer's like, yep. okay, here's another one. Yeah. And like, yeah, something went wrong, but that happens with automatics all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, the new hotness I have is uh, a watch from Hager. Um, and a friend of mine, uh, 
Nathan Edmondson, who was a writer on all the activity comics back mm-hmm. in the day, he kind of turned me on to that brand. And it was, it's kind of got some roots in the CIA, nice. like history-wise, in the company. Um, but they just came out with a new watch they were taking pre-orders for called their is the GMT Traveler, if I'm saying that right. Um, I think that's what it was. But That's my favorite type of watch. Well, I, it's, it's right here on the face. <laughs> GMT Traveler. Yeah, I got, I got it. But... Um, so what drew me to the watch was I've kind of always wanted a, a steel, a stainless steel bracelet because mm-hmm. it kind of, you know, churches up yeah. the watch. It's fancy. Yeah, it's, it's nice and fancy. I don't right. have a fancy, fancy watch. Yeah. Um, but I've kind of wanted one of those, but I've never really liked, I don't like Rolexes. I think they're way overpriced. I'm probably never going to own yeah. one in my life. 100%. Uh, but I did go, uh, Kelly and I were walking around one day in like the Hoity Toity Mall in <laughs> Dallas or whatever, so... Uh, I was looking at those and I saw that they came out with a new Rolex. It was like the first one I've ever kind of liked. Mm-hmm. And I re- really don't like the way Rolexes look. Yeah. But they called it the, you know, the Batman. The and I was BLNR. like, why do you call oh, yeah. it the Batman? It's like, well, half of it's blue, mm-hmm. lower half's black. Wait, no. Upper half's black, lower half's blue. Yeah. And, you know, because the old school Batman 66 was Love blue it. and then, you know, new school Batman's black. So that's why they called it that. But, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to spend whatever eight nine grand. If, They've gotten ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, there's no way they used um, to be the best bargain you could get for an automatic watch mm-hmm. when they like in the '60s. Really? Yeah, they've had guys that would buy them for like four hundred bucks, which back then was still like a thousand dollars, but still like yeah. that's a fantastic deal. Wow. Now they're they're getting ridiculous with yeah. the pricing. But I saw that one. That was the first one I was drawn to, and then when I saw the the travelers that came out from Hager. They offered a black and blue one, a Batman edition. Yep. I was like, oh, man, Done. that's super cool. I got to get that. So it was like two payments over like six months. I think it was like 350 each payment. Like layaway. So, yeah, it was. It was nice. That's awesome. So I didn't have to pay all at once, which was cool. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, it was like two payments of 350 so the total was like $700. Um, they don't have them right now because they just fulfilled all the, mm-hmm. basically, the early buyers. Um, and I just recently got it, finally, yep. like, a couple weeks ago. But uh, that was that's probably the most I've ever spent on a watch. Yeah. So, and honestly, like feature to feature versus a Rolex GMT, they're they're pretty much neck and neck. Well, I was looking at the movement in it, and it's got a uh, Soparod soap. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I forget. It's like a C125 movement. It's uh, it's supposed to be a little bit better than <laughs> the what was it, the E. What's the name of that company? ETA? The, yeah, ETA yep. movement that's typically a GMT. Because it's a GMT watch, and we can talk about that in a second. Sure. But, um, it's kind of an interesting feature. And I like the colors. I like the way it looks. And I like that it's not $9,000. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, the GMTs are my favorite watch. And my so Pan Am is why the GMT exists. Pan Am? Like yep. the airline? So when Pan Am started flying with jetliners, okay. they began to they began to run into the issue where their pilots were able to travel over time zones. Okay. Because they were were fast. We didn't have planes that fast before. So you'd have a pilot that would land in an area that would be in a totally different time zone from where he took off. So they needed a way to set watches that could keep track of two time zones. And so Rolex introduced the GMT. Mm. And so the first GMTs that they ever made went to Pan Am and they're actually like super valuable, Hmm. but they did, a bezel that has two delineations and the bottom delineations for daytime and the top delineations for nighttime. Mm. So they'd originally done red and blue and red was for the day and blue was for the nighttime. But with this newest one, they're doing blue and black. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so it allowed you to, when you landed, you could set your home time zone um, for the, the ring. So if you wanted to call home or something like that and you looked at your watch, you could tell, Oh, it's, you know, four o'clock back at home when it might be, six o'clock wherever hmm. but i always liked it because it's kind of like the first app for watches yeah to where it was like the watch could do something else yeah. other than like i mean for forever it was always like wh- what time is it and that was what mm-hmm. your watch did and that was it and yeah. then they started to come out with like the date and yeah. all that kind of stuff does it have a date on it it does nice which i like and it doesn't have a cyclops window which i really like what's the cyclops it's window? that little um Oh, the little bubble? Yeah, I hate oh, I, that. Yeah. I love Rolex it when I'm, that, yeah, right? and I love it when I'm using it, but I hate it looks why. It <laughs> looks disgusting. It's a pimple on the watch. It's like the the camera on an iPhone that you hate. Yeah. The protrude the protruding camera. I just that's yeah. pretentious that they would do that. <laughs> um, but you can actually take those cyclops and you can scrape them off. 
Really? Yeah, because it's not part of the no, glass. They're, gla- they're glued on. <laughs> now it's a super strong glue, but you can actually pop them off That's and funny. finish the crystal. I'm down surprised a bit. you haven't done that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> Go that far. I don't want to be chipping at the watch face. Well, that's your dad's too, right? Yeah, it was given yeah. to me as a gift from my dad. Yeah. So, uh, and that's uh, that's one of the the issues with owning a passed down Rolex mm-hmm. is that you get none of the benefits of having <laughs> been able to purchase it, and you get all of the judgment from people that are like, "Oh, hoity toity watch." Yeah, uh-huh. So it's like. And you get all the maintenance. That <laughs> exactly. <goes on>. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that was the point I was going to make. Is like you had the GPT that broke. You mm-hmm. called them and. 40 bucks. Yeah, 40 bucks in a bit. My GMT stopped working about a year ago, and I called Rolex, and they were like, yeah, sure, send it in. We'll take a look at it, and we'll give you an estimate for the repairs. Mm -hmm. And I started looking up online, you know, what's the full overhaul going to cost and that kind of stuff, and it was anywhere between, like, $1,200 and $2,500. Damn. Yeah. So, like, I got to wait a little bit to get that (laughs) serviced. but. Yeah, that's that's the tricky part. Now mm. there's some uh, there's some fly by night guys that'll do it for you. Weren't you saying something too that if they replace parts, they won't give you, they won't put, they won't make sure that they use your same. Yeah, Rolex parts. is not concerned with keeping your watch in original condition. Yeah. They've never been about vintage market, and they don't care about resale. Hmm. So if you send them a watch to to service, and they've had guys send in like '60s era mm-hmm. beautiful pieces to get like a movement repaired. And they will change the dial, they'll change the bezel, they'll change the bracelets, they'll change it all. They'll completely overhaul it. They'll send you your parts back that they replace, but still, I mean, it's the same thing with any antique. Mm -hmm. People get them and then they take it to a polishing or something. Don't do anything, just leave it exactly as it is. That's what increases the value. So, yeah, they've been notoriously crappy about Hmm. changing people's parts out and stuff. So, And like when people are getting into watches... I would not recommend jumping into Rolex at this point. Yeah. If you want to pick up a used one, I think there's great deals on used Submariners and well, stuff. Well, I know I mentioned the GPT-1, but the one, the Seiko that you have is pretty That's nice That's my favorite too, right? watch. I have the Seiko SKX-007. Mm-hmm. That doesn't have anything to do with James Bond. That's just their reference number. But, like, as far as dive watches, if you want to get an automatic dive watch, I think this is the best deal mm-hmm. ever. It's like 190 bucks, And yeah. I've had this for, I don't know, four years now. And I've had no issues out of it. It's probably due for a service soon, but we'll link to the article you wrote on it. Too. That's right, I did that. Yeah, yeah. and we love it. And we had a pretty extensive gear tasting uh, episode on YouTube that we did about watches That's right. too. So we'll link to that in the episode yeah. intel too. And I bought a, a steel bracelet similar to that one, the Oyster bracelet for it for like fifty bucks. Yeah. So all in for like under two fifty, and it's an yeah. awesome watch. That's so cool. That's replaced my my daily watch, mm-hmm. but I still mix it up. Well. That's one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that it, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get a nice automatic that, that you can church up whatever you're yeah. wearing with. You and know, you can always so. change straps. Yeah. You can put it on a NATO strap. You can put it on leather straps. You can change it up to whatever you're doing. And I think it helps because you can, if you're going to dress up, you can mm-hmm. make it dressy. Well, that's one thing that's cool, too, with NATO straps. Like, I got a, for that black, or it, it's a black, black frog mm-hmm. from Resco. I actually got a pretty cool leather strap that's that's looked really neat with age. So it's almost like a cognac, cognac color or something like that. And who'd you pick that up from? Um, one Star Leather that's is right. the name of the company. I actually want to get a new one uh, just just to kind of – because it's kind of getting worn. And mm-hmm. I mean, I've probably had it for three years now. That's but, awesome. Yeah, it's, it a cool, it's a cool contrast too with kind of a blacked out watch yeah. and the, the, the tan colored leather. It's pretty neat. Yeah. So I've got that one, and then I've got another Resco that I got, a quartz movement, and the name of that Resco Mantis. is... Mantis. Yes, thank you. Um, man- is it the Mantis? Pretty sure. It's the chronograph, Man- right? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. Maybe but, not. But Manna doesn't sound right Maybe either. Maybe Anyway, um, that one was a quartz movement, and I picked that up on eBay. It was almost brand new, and mm-hmm. I got it for a steal. So that's the other one I have, and then I've got a... I've got the the Hager, obviously, the mm-hmm. GPT-1, and then I've got one more, that gray watch that I got, and I can't remember. Is it Tissot? It. Yes. Okay. No, no, no. No? No, that's not it. No. Because that's a pretty expensive brand. Um, anyway. I said Tragit or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. Jeez. The face is in my head. But yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm looking at the watch <laughs> in, my, in my head right now. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll put, uh, you know, when we link to the video mm-hmm. on YouTube, it's in there, so... I think I talk about it in there too. Awesome. But 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of having the date on watches too. I like have that's to. A, I have a pilot watch that doesn't yeah. have the date on it, and I don't wear it because it doesn't. Well, the GPT one doesn't have a date, so I should mention that. Yeah. But I still find that I like wearing it, even though it doesn't. How many times do you check it during the for day the date? for the date? Uh, a couple. I probably look yeah. at least like five or six times a day, yeah. and that's the only reason is because like you yeah. have to know what the date is. And I have so we didn't talk about this. I have an Apple Watch, and my least favorite feature of the Apple Watch is that when the hour or in the second hand or hour hand goes over the date window Mm -hmm. it covers up the date Mm. now you have you have a watch that's been designed digitally (laughs) where you could do anything you want on the face (laughs) and they chose to let it cover up the date because that's the most obnoxious thing is checking your watch at the 15 yeah and you're like oh i can't see the date i gotta look under (laughs) and they did that on the apple watch i'm like ah that's funny you had one job that's one thing i can't get into yet my sister just got an apple watch and we were just talking about this yesterday we over my grandma's 91st birthday and so she was showing me the new apple watch she got she's like i'm surprised you don't have one you're such an apple and i was like i just i can't i can't justify it yet and i do like the fact because i swim a lot so Mm -hmm. i do like the fact that it counts laps as you turn that's a cool feature to me and now it's fully waterproof with the series two they Mm -hmm. just came out with so it's getting there sure but it's still i i hate notifications yeah like i have them all no, turned off on my phone not for you yeah it's just <laughs> terrible so i i literally don't even have the badge app icons that show numbers in there like yeah. that's how far i go like right. i don't want to know anything yeah until i actually click the app because yeah. then it's like always staring me in the face i feel like i need to be doing something about it so mm-hmm. That's the thing that I just can't get into with the Apple Watch is I don't feel like I would use it the way that sure. it's designed to be used. And that's why I stopped wearing it yeah. primarily. I do work out with it, and I, the only reason is because I can click it, and it does a rest timer for me, mm-hmm. and it taps me on the wrist when I'm supposed to stop resting. So can you do music with it? Oh, yeah. Okay. It, you can upload up to 8 gigabytes and of music it has direct Bluetooth, right? on the device. Yeah. Well, now with the AirPods, and I did actually just get some of those, but so now I've been starting to consider that because they discontinued the shuffle. Yep. And that's the only thing that I've been using mm-hmm. at the gym. Like, I'll take a shuffle and I'll have my earbuds in. Yep. Um, and I've got some waterproof ones from Bose that I wear when I work out. And I like them because they fit in my ear real well. But now with the AirPods, I actually used a f- pair from a friend of mine and was doing all kinds of stuff. Like, I simulated a sit-up. I simulated, mm-hmm. you know, doing pull-ups and, you know, running and things like that. And they did not fall out of my ears. So it truly is the cable that makes those yeah. fall out of your ears. So I kind of thought about it, and I'm like, you know, with the shuffle being what it is, and now it's gone, I could put music onto my Apple Watch yep. and be completely wireless and just put the earbuds in and work out like that. Yep. So hopefully hopefully that's a possibility in the future, but it really, that's still not enough. Like, no. yes, being able to swim with it, and yes, being able to listen to music at the gym with it, but it's still like... It's expensive to buy just for those sure. things. Well, and I also tremendously miss wearing a regular wristwatch when I'm wearing it. Right. That's <clears throat> but I'm not going to be the weirdo yeah. that wears it on my right wrist to like double <laughs> like watch to it. Watch yeah, it? That's, no, no, no. I'm not going to be that guy. That's super pretentious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be that guy either. But yeah, I mean, that's just kind of a, a, a brief overview of yeah. some stuff that we've wanted to talk about with watches. And, you know, I think. You know, to kind of put this more into the, you know, the tactical light, too, I know a lot of guys that still wear automatics into the field and stuff like that, too, mm-hmm. um, and they swear by them still. I just, I'm just not that person. To me, it's like, it's the, it's, and I hate, I Because I don't want to, I don't want a, uh, the glow to give me. Well, you know? and that's, the, it's like, to me, it's like the 1911 or older pistols versus the newer polymer pistols debate. Mm-hmm. It's like. Does it do a better job with like the G-Shock and the digital and the quartz and all that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do people still like the old style? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when you wear an automatic, you do have to worry about getting a cover so that the glow yeah. doesn't get you. The fact that you can't do a time hack super easily. Like, right. hey, we're going to time hack. Well, ho- hold on. I got to I yeah. set We didn't stuff. really talk about hacking movements yeah. either. So. And that Hager has one, right? Yeah, it So does. that's a great That's a great. Um, Actually, deal. all my – anything that's automatic that I have has one. That's like a requirement That's for me. super good because yeah. this Seiko does not. That's the yeah. one thing I dislike about it. Yeah. So I want makes my it tough. second hand to stop when I Yeah, it's important because it. yeah. you got to time hack. Otherwise, right. you're like, eh, it's about. Yeah. Although then when you hack, you got to like, hey, wait a minute. And that's Let me get is. around to the toe. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was talking about. Like <laughs> yeah. that's the difference. Is like, And so that's why more often than not, whenever we're going to do camping or outdoors or muster or anything, mm-hmm. I'm just grabbing the G-Shock. Yeah. It's, just it's so much super easy to hack too. Yeah. Yeah. That's watches. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. As always, check the episode intel on ITSTactical.com. 
uh, or the YouTube video that we do, that we film this with, if you're interested in checking out some video footage. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> From the episode. So tune in every Tuesday. We have a new episode. And check us out on Patreon, ITS Tactical. Sorry, patreon.com slash ITS Tactical. Uh, if you'd consider joining and supporting the show, we'd very much appreciate it. And we got some things to give you in return. Thanks for listening.